In the online Sherlockian community, I find that there is a bit of a misconception that a good number of people have, which can damage their potential in deduction. So let's have a look at it, shall we? Now, when I was but a wee aspiring deductionist, just starting out, researching deduction on any online forum or blog I could find, I found something somewhat peculiar with the comment sections of these articles and blogs. People pretending to be like Sherlock Holmes, particularly the rendition from the BBC adaptation. I even saw one person go so far as to call someone who disagreed with this point as Anderson, who we all know to be the forensic scientist on Scotland Yard that Sherlock Holmes has a bit of a disdain for, for obvious reasons. Now, I'm aware that many of you watching this were likely inspired by this extremely popular adaptation of the classic character, as I received a surge in my subscriber count when Sherlock the Abominable Bride aired, as well as the fact that my videos with Benedict Cumberbatch's Sherlock in the thumbnail do fairly well in terms of views. If you're one of these people, don't feel singled out. I'm one too! Don't judge me. Before I watched the BBC's Sherlock, my interest in Sherlock Holmes was a casual one, as I believed his powers of deduction to be purely fictitious, or at the very least requiring a natural talent that I simply didn't have. Watching the BBC's version and seeing Sherlock's logic behind his deductions be explained in the way they were made it seem all attainable, and ever since I've been dedicating my mind to acquiring said skill. So, whatever your inspiration for wanting to be able to have powers of deduction is not the issue here. It is something else. It's something that I want to warn you all about because it's not a good thing. It's the desire to emulate Holmes. Now, there is a staunch difference between wanting to be able to think like Sherlock Holmes and wanting to be Sherlock Holmes. As clear as the distinction between seeing and observing. Sherlock Holmes has an amazing skill for being able to see through any person or situation and read them with extraordinary accuracy. We all know this, and wanting to be able to do that is the whole reason that we're all here. It's the whole reason I made this channel. And wanting that is not wrong at all. But if one really wants to attain said skill, and thinks that emulating Holmes' every character aspect will cause them to attain it, is unfortunately wrong, and in fact doing such will pose even more of a roadblock for them. And don't click away if you aren't one to emulate Holmes, because there is more to what I'm talking about than just that. Now, for those very few of you who are naturally like the Great Sleuth in terms of your personality, you are somewhat of an exception. However, for the rest of you, for even those who are kind of like Sherlock Holmes in your personality, there should never be a conscious effort to change your personality to fit that of Holmes's or anyone else for that matter. Bruce Lee, a martial artist and a philosopher, once said, Do not go out and look for a successful personality and duplicate it. And I wholeheartedly agree. This whole idea of emulating Holmes, I believe, stems from the fake it till you make it philosophy. The idea that if you pretend to be something that you're not, it will help you to become that which you are emulating. In reality, this doesn't actually work. Unless there's an internal change in mind, there can be no genuine change in action or conduct. Maintaining a facade takes conscious effort, which draws from your finite attention, making it more difficult to focus on what you are actually trying to accomplish. To illustrate the difference between an internal change and an external change, let's say that you were trying to make a deduction about someone. But at the same time, you were trying to be suave and cool like Sherlock by adjusting the way you sit, and even altering your movements. By focusing on keeping up the act, it will make it more difficult to focus on making deduction about the person. Alternatively, if as a result of constant training you begin to have a more graceful walking stride, and it is more natural to be mindful and observant, you consequently attain data faster to make a deduction. This is fine. For Holmes, many of his physical characteristics are a byproduct of his mental abilities. He walks a certain way because he's observant. He is not observant because he walks a certain way. And this is the fundamental problem with the fake it till you make it philosophy. It mistakes the effect for the cause. 
Now, of course, as aspiring detectives and deductionists alike, we take a look at an effect that we can observe and deduce the cause by reasoning backwards. However, this fake until you make it philosophy upholds the effect as the cause, rather than it simply being a byproduct of what it is, insinuating that you can change your internal state by altering your movements, how you sit, how you look, that sort of thing. It upholds the effect and makes it into the cause, and this is not only wrong, but fundamentally opposed to what we stand for as deductionists. The more I research them, the more I am convinced that personality types have a big impact on how a person thinks. For instance, Sherlock Holmes is an INTP, which means he is introverted, intuitive, thinking, and perceiving. Now before you jump on the bandwagon and say, ah, that's probably me, this is a personality type that only encompasses 3% of the population, mind you. People with the INTP personality type are generally great analysts and abstract thinkers, imaginative, open-minded, enthusiastic, objective, and straightforward. You can obviously see how these qualities might be beneficial for deduction. For a little more context, I am an INTJ personality type, which has a number of similarities to the INTP personality type, and is also in the analyst category. I am introverted, intuitive, thinking, and judging. My personality type has strengths such as quick, imaginative, and strategic mind, high self-confidence, independent and decisive, hardworking and determined, open-minded, and the added quality of being a jack of all trades. Am I all of that all the time? Well, no, no, but ideally, yes. If I am thinking at optimal capacity, that is a good reflection of what I am. Again, you can probably see some traits that would be suited for practicing deduction, despite it not being the same as the INTP personality type. For instance, because I have a natural tendency to formulate plans and strategies in my mind, it makes it very easy for me to formulate a structured plan of attack in terms of my observations and even progression of my logic. It also helps me, for instance, if I see an object that a person is carrying or something of that nature, I can reverse engineer the plan that they had when purchasing said object based on other things that I've already deduced about their personality, and in that way deduce the purpose, function, and use that they have for said object, because my mind is so familiar with the process of formulating plans. Thus, while this strategy works very well for me, it wouldn't necessarily work very well for someone who doesn't constantly form plans as I do, and isn't familiar with how that works. To further illustrate my point, let's take for example a non-analyst personality type, and even a step further, a non-introverted personality type. Say for instance, the ENFP personality type, which stands for extroverted, intuitive, feeling, and perceiving. Some of their strengths encompass curious, observant, energetic, and enthusiastic. Excellent communicators, know how to relax, very popular and friendly. As you can see, there are some traits that would be beneficial to the ENFP in deduction, and other traits that, with a little bit of work, could be tailored to work in deduction. Being a silent introvert, I find is certainly beneficial for being an observer of people and the world around me, allowing me to be able to draw data from observations without having to worry about dull chit-chat. However, being a naturally likable extrovert can also be good for gathering information, simply in a different way. Being an excellent communicator and a naturally very popular person, while at the same time being observing, can make it easy for someone of this personality type to ask poignant questions in such a way as to obtain useful information that can be used in a complex deduction. And this is where the art comes into the science. I took the name The Art of Deduction because in many ways it is. The scientific aspect of this study, many would agree, is at its very best 80% accurate. Furthermore, there is no one method that works every time, particularly because each person is different. This factors into both the practitioner of deduction and the person being observed. Every person has their own strengths and weaknesses, their flaws along with their admirable qualities. We're all unique in some way or another, and it makes sense that you would tailor your own individual strengths to the field of deduction while always being vigilant for your own particular weaknesses. Which is further reason why you shouldn't emulate Holmes, because by taking on his personality, you run the risk of taking his character flaws as well. So not only do you have to deal with focusing on keeping up a facade and your own individual weaknesses, but now also the weaknesses of the personality you are trying to emulate. All things you would have to divide your attention to instead of focusing on making deductions. Our motto here at The Art of Deduction is see the truth behind the facade. If you didn't know that, it's on the banner now. So, why would we want to create a facade for ourselves if we are those who value the truth? So, in essence, be yourself. Understand your own individuality, flaws and all. Knowing who you are makes it to where you can optimize efficiency. 
but at the same time, knowing who you are takes a bit of introspection. Now, if you want a good place to start with that introspection, I would recommend finding out what your personality type actually is. A link to the Myers-Briggs personality test is in the description below. It takes anywhere from 10-12 to 12 minutes to actually take the test, and they provide detailed descriptions for each personality, from their strengths and weaknesses to their workplace habits, and even how they deal with romance. It is certainly very interesting to see, especially if you were honest with your answers, because if you were, you'll likely find what you're reading to be shockingly familiar. So, whether you've been trying to emulate Holmes all this time, or you simply haven't achieved optimal efficiency with your thought process, I hope this video has opened your eyes to a few things that you might want to avoid in the future. So, if you are new to the channel and you liked what you saw, be sure to click the big red subscribe button down below. If you learned something new here today, let me know in the comments. Also, if you liked the editing style which I used for this video, this is the first time I used Premiere by the way, um, be sure to give it a like, I'll take that into consideration. I'm planning on making videos more like this in the future, probably not as long because this one took forever to make, but I will continue to try and make quality videos like this one. So if you liked it, let me know by giving it a like. Um, and if you absolutely love what I do here, be sure to share this video on all your social media platforms, because that really helps me out a lot. And remember, when we hit 1,000 subscribers, you get an opportunity to not only help a charity, but also buy an awesome t-shirt in the process. If you want to know more about that, click this info card up here to talk, uh, where I talk about that in the video that I uploaded last. So, before you go, there is one more thing I would like to mention. An online deduction society has asked if I would give their new website a shout out. If you have ever wanted to be able to look at cold cases and interesting and unsolved ongoing cases to test your abilities in a practical way amongst other people who are interested in deduction so that you can bounce ideas off of and potentially make some connections, then you might be interested in Sleuths Online. So far they have one case on the side, which is about a YouTuber, Marina Joyce, who seems to have completely changed her personality, sparking many an internet theory. But as of yet, they have no other cases on the site. So if you're interested in seeing where it goes, and if you think it might be conducive to your training, go see what they have. Link to the website is provided in the description below. So until next time, all you aspiring detectives out there, arrivederci.